So if you're considering adding a battery electric vehicle to your own personal driveway, it's important to know that there are different kinds of battery electric vehicles out there. In this video, we're going to tell you a little bit about them and what our personal experience is. If you're considering purchasing a battery electric vehicle for the first time and you've never owned one coming straight from internal combustion engines or, or even mild hybrids or plug-in hybrids, you might not be aware that there are different kinds of battery electrics out there, such as the compliance car, the battery electric vehicle made by a legacy manufacturer, and the battery electric vehicle that's made by a company that doesn't do anything else but battery electric full electric vehicles. There's even electric motorcycles out there. We have one of each and we thought we could offer a unique perspective or at least a, a personal perspective if not unique to what our experiences with this these different types of electric vehicles are. We'll go into some of the differences more in depth throughout this video and if some of them are just going to be topics for another video. If you have an idea that you'd like to learn more about from our EVs or our experiences, let me know in the comments. But some of the main differences are going to be the keys. Here's one for the compliance car. Here's what it is for the legacy auto manufacturer. And here's what it is for the Tesla. Another one is going to be the backup camera. This is the compliance car, the legacy auto manufacturer, and the Tesla. The first type of battery electric vehicle that we're going to talk about is what's commonly called a compliance car. In the 2010s, uh, some states like California and Oregon had laws in place that if a vehicle manufacturer wanted to sell a car in their state, they had to offer something that was zero emissions or extraordinarily low emissions or something along those lines. And so these compliance cars were built. And what manufacturers did was they took a car they already had and took out the engine and took out the gas tank and crammed as many batteries as they could fit and put in an electric motor and said, here you go, California. How about this one, Oregon? Now are we good to go? This is a Fiat 500e. It was our first electric vehicle that we put into our personal fleet and it is one of those compliance cars. What Fiat did was they took their regular Fiat 500 put as many batteries as they could fit and threw an electric motor in here under the hood and boom, electric car. So this was our gateway EV. It got us into electric cars and why we have a few of them now. And it has very many pluses and it has some minuses. The downside of a compliance car is going to be range. Since the car wasn't designed to have a battery pack for maximum range, it could only fit whatever they could fit. Also, its aerodynamics didn't take battery efficiency into account, and so there's, it has a fair amount of drag. As a result, most compliance cars don't have more than about 140 miles of range at best, like a Volkswagen e-Golf or a Ford Focus Electric or a Kia Niro, uh, not a Kia Niro, a Kia Soul EV, uh, would be in those compliance cars. Our Fiat 500e has uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 87 miles of range on a good day. What this car excels at though is it's fun and it use, doesn't use any gas so it saves money on fuel but where it's going to excel is for a city dweller, someone who doesn't have a super long commute. That's not to say that if you don't live in a city that this car won't work for you. We don't live in a city. We live 20 miles away from the closest grocery store this car can serve for us, but you've got to plan ahead. So this is Rachel's daily driver, and I'm going to have her talk about what her experiences are with this car. So the Fiat 500e, it looks exactly like a regular Fiat 500. I've had other Fiat owners approach me and not even realize it was an electric version. It doesn't have a tailpipe, but you have to look kind of closely to see that. Otherwise, it's exactly like any other Fiat 500. Um, it does have a fun key. It's got a little switch key like that, which I like. Um, and otherwise, it looks on the outside just like a regular gas-powered car. On the inside, it still pretty much looks like a regular gas-powered car. It's got normal controls. Um, it does have these funny things where your windows are rolled down by buttons here, but I think that's the same on a gas-powered Fiat as well. It, otherwise, it's got these cute little buttons uh, that are your 
gear shift. It has a regular parking brake. It's all pretty normal, just like you would have on a gas powered version. Uh, now this car, even though it's super fun to drive and I really like it, it is old technology. It is a 2018 model, but Luke always says it has 2013 technology because they really just kind of crammed some batteries into an existing body style that they already had and didn't try too hard. It was just a compliance car. That means that it doesn't get great range. I always tell everyone this car gets about 88 miles of range on a good day, which means that I'm not going on road trips. Um, especially since even though it has the smaller out of range, you can't even fast charge it. It'll do level two charging, but it won't do fast charge. And so I just use it for driving back and forth to work, short trips, and I'm not going out twice in one day either. So um, it's not a car that will replace your gas powered car if you're used to doing long trips or if you need to be able to do multiple trips in one day, but it works great for me. I actually really like this car. It's a lot of fun. Um, we actually just sold the Subaru, which had always been uh, my favorite car, and I actually don't miss it. I like this car that much. The biggest plus right now in 2024 for purchasing a compliance car as your first EV is that they are extremely inexpensive. You can find them for under $10,000, sometimes near $7,000, with only about 40,000 miles on them. The downside, aside from the range is that you are going to get older technology and it's not really designed to be an electric vehicle. Uh, the backup camera on this car is not the greatest one compared to the other vehicles that we have with the newer technology. Uh, but if you want something that's going to feel like your internal combustion engine car, a compliance car like this might be a good way to go. Coupled with the fact that it's not going to cost you a whole lot to get into one, especially with the used EV tax credit, you wouldn't get the $4,000 because the cars don't cost enough for that to equal the percentage of the, of the price for you to get the full 4,000, but you would get a decent amount off if you purchased it from a dealer because of that federal tax credit on used EVs. If you've never driven an electric vehicle before, you might be surprised by a feature that most EVs have called regenerative braking. Uh, that is where the motor slows the car down as opposed to the friction brakes that you're used to on your internal combustion engine vehicle. If you don't like the feel of regenerative braking, a compliance car might be the way to go. This Fiat uses regenerative braking, but it's not automatic. If you want to slow this car down, you've got to put your foot on the brake. But at any speed above eight miles per hour, it's regen through the electric motor that's slowing the car down. The friction brakes don't kick in until you're at eight miles per hour or under. And when it's wet outside, you can feel when that happens. But the big plus to that is you're not wearing your brake pads. You get really good life out of the brake pads, even with this car with the older technology and without what's called one pedal drive. As the 20 teens continued, some of the legacy manufacturers out there uh, decided that they should make an electric vehicle all the way from scratch, from the ground up, a car that's designed to be an EV so that it could have enough room to have a big enough battery pack to have a decent amount of range where you could take it on a road trip. Enter the Chevy Bolt. The Chevy Bolt came around in 2017. It was capable of 259 miles of range. We purchased ours as a brand new 2022, right after General Motors did the first battery recall and had huge rebates. I think our rebate on this was like $5,900 off from the manufacturer. Pros of having a battery electric from a legacy auto manufacturer is you're still going to have all the familiar buttons, the, the buttons on the steering wheel, the radio knobs, all the things for the climate control. It's going to feel like a regular car, but because it's designed as an EV, it has some electric vehicle features built in. Now the Bolt does have one pedal drive that you can activate or you can just straight up turn off. The original Bolt, it was in the shifter, you shift it into L and that was your regen. This car is a 2022, it's a button and it has a picture of a foot uh, going on a brake pedal and all of that. And that allows you to not have to use the brake pedal at all. It all, it can slow the car down completely with regenerative braking. 
Downside to that is occasionally we have to put it in neutral and hit the brake so that the brake pads go onto the rotor so the rotor doesn't collect rust. But uh, we still get really good brake life and we can control the regen with the paddle or the brake pedal and that is how we can stop the car. The Bolt being newer, it has some technological advances over our Fiat, but it is still fairly mid-20-teens tech. Uh, but it does have the, the lane assist. It, it basically, it lets you know if you're drifting from your lane, and it might nudge the wheel a little bit, but it will f go out of the lane with that on. It has automatic traffic uh, traction control, uh, blind spot monitoring in the backup camera, and uh, forward collision alert. Now, it won't stop the car for you automatically, but it will flash a bright light and scream at you and if that gets you to stop then hey everything's great the backup camera on this car however is chef's kiss it is high definition it is a big screen it is very easy to see out of and it's a big difference and a huge upgrade from our fiat other legacy manufacturers are making ground up evs like the ford mustang mach e or ford f-150 lightning the toyota bz4x and subaru saltera the other Chevrolets like the Blazer, uh, the Cadillac Lyric, the Equinox that's coming out, the Volvo recharges, the Volkswagen ID4, and the list goes on and on. The Hyundai Ionic 5, Kia EV6, legacy manufacturers that are making EVs that are good cars that are going to feel more like a car than one from a company that doesn't make anything else. And another advantage is you can find a Chevy dealership easily. You can find a Ford dealership easily. But on the downside, they may only have one EV tech, and if you have questions about buying the car, they're not necessarily going to know a lot about it. Some dealerships stay on top of it and have people trained for EVs, but most dealerships don't. In our personal experience, this car has served us well. We've run out the basic warranty of 36,000 miles on it with our own mileage. We've taken multiple road trips in our home state of Texas from where we live in North Texas down to Houston, San Antonio, Austin a couple of times. This car has road tripped with us uh, across the country to Tennessee and back twice since we've owned it. You can road trip a Bolt. You just have to have a lot of patience. Why does it take a lot of patience to road trip a Chevy Bolt? Because electric vehicles on the road do what's called DC fast charging. And if you'd like to have an educational video on that, hey, tell us in the comments. And that's a topic for another video. But this car doesn't charge very fast at a DC fast charging station. Uh, very often, a, a, a short charge stop is about 30 minutes. It's not unheard of to spend an hour at a charging station on a road trip uh, with this car. And a lot of people just don't have the patience for that on a road trip. For us, we can time out meal stops and sometimes we don't mind sitting in the car for 45 minutes or so and you know rest our eyes or play a game on our phone or something like that. But you gotta have that level of patience if you're gonna road trip this car. Then we come to the battery electric vehicle that's made by a company that doesn't make anything else, such as this Tesla Model 3. Only had this car for a little over a month and we absolutely love it. The advantage you get over a vehicle that is made by a company that only makes EVs is that the people who work there are knowledgeable about their car. They'll be able to tell you anything you need to know about that vehicle because it's all they sell. You will have the top tech this car is capable of over-the-air updates, so its software is always refreshing and it's always new. Downside, if you like to have a lot of buttons, you're not going to get them with this car. There's a, two buttons on the steering wheel. The buttons for the windows and the opening the door and everything else is done through a large screen in the middle of this car. It's just true on a Tesla Model Y. Not true of all pure EVs like this. The Rivians, you've got a display and maybe a but not very many other buttons. Uh, Lucid is very similar the same way. I'm not going to include Polestar as, a, as an EV only company, even though Polestar is an EV only make, but they're basically Volvos that are electric. In fact, I think between you, me and the fence post, General Motors missed a golden opportunity of hanging on to the Saturn nameplate and having all of their Saturns be all EVs. As far as technology, Pure EV companies throw a lot of technology into them. They're really rolling computers. They, this car can very nearly drive itself with some input from me. I only have the basic autopilot package, but it'll stay in its lane and then maintain the flow of traffic on cruise control, even if I'm in a traffic jam that's stop and go traffic, which is really kind to my calves. Uh, it, this car has 
cameras all over it uh, to keep an eye on the road, to keep an eye on people messing with it. There are nine cameras on this car that are always recording. Uh, there are remote features for the front, the trunk, the mirrors auto can automatically fold in. The backup camera on this gives me three views. I've got the fish eyes from straight behind. I've got the side view on the side repeater cameras for me to check my blind spots. It is amazing how much I can see just on the screen when I go into reverse, which is good because I can't see out the rear mirror very well. In other terms of technology, there are a lot of apps that you can control a lot of this car on your phone. I can set the climate control. I can precondition the battery. I can... Um, tell it when I'm leaving to go to work so that all I have to do is go out to the car and the climate control's already been running and all of that, which is handy when it's plugged in. This car charges much faster than our Bolt. It's not the fastest charging EV out there, but it has a, it has a respectable charge rate. In fact, that's why we one of the main reasons why we purchased this car used from, a, from Hertz. One major downside to an EV only manufacturer like Tesla or Rivian or Lucid or VinFast or even Fisker is that there aren't a lot of service centers for you to get the car worked on. As a result, there can sometimes be long waits just because everybody's taking their car to the same place to get warranty work or something like that done. Tesla is probably the most prevalent, but here in North Texas, I've got three choices across four counties that I could take this car to. Rivian, I'd have to drive all the way to Dallas, which is an hour plus drive just to go there. And Lucid, I had a friend who wanted to test drive one. We had to drive to Denver to do that. So it's not like a Ford dealership on every corner or a Chevy dealership in every town, at least not yet. Personal experience with this car, I haven't had it super long, but I, I've only had it a little over a month, but I absolutely love the car. One thing that I've noticed about this one, and it could just be because it's the Tesla, is it's almost as personalizable as a Harley Davidson. There are a lot of aftermarket ma uh, manufacturers to make accessories and things like that. And you can personalize this car however you want. I've already put in a screen protector. We've changed the wheel covers. We've uh, gotten the windows tinted. We've done a few things already. And we're really looking forward to our first road trip with this car. As a little bit of bonus content, there's also electric motorcycles. We have one, just the one, and it's from a legacy manufacturer. This is a Harley Davidson, but because it makes no noise, my wife calls it a Harley Davidson. Uh, this is a Harley Davidson Livewire 2020 that we bought used, and this is an incredibly fun motorcycle to ride, and it has incredible efficiency. It has, it right now is getting about 8.4 miles per kilowatt hour compared to 3.4 9 on the Fiat, 4.0 on the Bolt, and around 4.8 on the Tesla. Um, this is going to behave a lot like an EV, the throttle twist to accelerate, and when you let go, depending on what mode you're riding in, regenerative braking will slow you down, and you can change that into three different pre-programmed modes, or you can program it however you want it to behave. And it does have the brakes where the normal motorcycle would be. If you're a motorcyclist, you will notice that there is no clutch because this, like all of the EVs, doesn't have a transmission. The backup camera on this is called a mirror. There's one here, there's one here, or you turn over your shoulder and you look that way. This bike is very fun to ride. It handles well, it accelerates great. It's just a blast. So those are just some of the differences between the different types of EVs and some of our personal experience. Did we leave anything out? Probably, because, you know, we're not experts, but we love these cars. Uh, if you found this video informative, Give us a like, You'd subscribe for more content, and if you've got uh, some other content you'd like to know about, let us know in the comments. Yeah, let's Th do it. <laughs> th thanks for watching. Bye.